What more is there to be said about the DS1 that hasn't already been said? Not a lot. Then this would be a very short video. But okay, here goes. So 1978, one of the first distortion pedals as opposed to overdrive, and more on that later. Very simple controls, tone, level, distortion, and they work more or less as you'd expect. Nothing like the PW2 and its elusive fat and muscle controls. Over the years, there have been some changes to electronics, mainly due to parts becoming obsolete. The one I'm going to be using here is from 2002 and is made in Taiwan, so it's part of this third generation. I'll try and find some new uses for it, some new insights into how it works. Try it out with the baritone, try it out with the bass. The usual setup for these tests, Boss Katana 50, pretty much as much as possible set to noon. This doesn't necessarily deliver the best possible sound for this example, it's simply just a straightforward, repeatable setup. Our old friend the Shure SM57 is there up front to capture all of it. So one thing notable about the DS1 is that when the tone is at 12 o'clock, it doesn't mean it's a completely flat response. It does have a little dip in the mid-range. With the pedal engaged, there's a boost to low and high frequencies, but yes, there's this dip around 500 hertz in the middle. Let's turn up the level to account for the drop in volume when the distortion is this low, which it needs to be to get an accurate reading for this type of measurement. Now we can more easily see the change in tone when the pedal is engaged. <laughs> Turning the dial clockwise results in a boost to higher frequencies and a cut to lower frequencies. Because our hearing is more sensitive to these mid and high frequencies, this will sound a bit louder. Turning the dial anti-clockwise does the opposite, attenuating the high frequencies and boosting the lower frequencies. I think somewhere around nine o'clock, we get this fairly gentle, predictable curve, possibly the most pleasant tone in my completely subjective opinion. It can go further, but at the, this end of the dial produces a fairly extreme setting with not very much high frequencies. Bear in mind that music doesn't have a flat frequency response. When you add many instruments together and measure over a long enough period of time, you'll see that on average, there's more low frequencies than high frequencies and there's a fairly gentle, predictable slope to this curve. This is partly why I suggested that that nine o'clock setting on the tone control produced a pretty nice sound for perhaps playing on your own as it better mimics a complete piece of music. pedals that seems to exaggerate the squeakiness of the strings <coughs> but really we want to hear it with a much lower guitar that's a really good example of how when you switch to a baritone it just makes you want to play everything much slower but back to distortion in 1978, this was perhaps a much harsher distortion sound than was typically found in one of these compact foot pedals. It was this hard clipping circuit, as opposed to the more gentle saturations and overdrives. When we put in a one kilohertz sine tone, the output is nothing like a sine tone. It has an awful lot of added harmonics. Now, in my video on the PW2, you will see that the second harmonic was greatly reduced compared to the fundamental and to the third. And this contributed to its broken sound. And also just, just look at that clipping. It's very absolute. But the DS1 is far more saturated. It has a very high second harmonic. It is closer to traditional overdrive in that sense, even though on its release, it might've been quite different to those overdrives. There aren't the same gaps in the harmonic series as with the PW2. It is a more gentle, predictable slope, a more gentle, predictable decline. And don't worry too much about the precise shape of the waveform in these examples. This has as much to do with the tone control 
as a distortion. For those of you who might want a closer look at the electronics of the DS1, I'd recommend this page at electrosmash.com. You'll find analysis of the circuit and the simulated frequency response of each part of the circuit. Whereas in this video, I've opted to measure all of these parts together in one real device. For example, here's the tone control circuit showing that dip around 500 Hertz. But because of its ubiquity and its relative cheapness and the fact that there are so many secondhand pedals available now, the DS1 is a popular choice for modification. But maybe that's another video. It's always good to explore the possibility of is this a bass pedal hiding as a guitar pedal? So for this we're gonna use a DI sound with an amp sim added afterwards. Set so everything 12 o'clock again. So, this was the second pedal I ever bought. First was a wah. This was purchased in early January of 2002, just after the euro was introduced to the currency in Ireland. So I know I paid in Irish pounds and got my change in euro. That makes it uh, 18 and a bit, 18 and a half years old. This is about 